Hey guys, I'm here with Modern Salon today and we're gonna talk about um, the Jatai teasing pin comb that I was lovingly gifted by Jatai. Um, I've been playing around with this now for a couple of weeks in the salon and there's a lot of things I actually really like about this. Uh, some of you guys know I tend to do a lot of um, vintage looks, Edward Scissorhands type looks, um, so a good back combing comb is something that I always keep in my arsenal and when I have a good one I always call it the Nimbus. A lot of you probably already know that too. Um, this is my model Victoria. She is we're setting her hair right now so she's cooling down. Um, so I'm going to tell you a few things I like about this. Uh, it's got a pointed handle so this makes sectioning super quick and easy and you can get really clean sections with that. There's not any harsh seams on it so it doesn't snag the hair. Um, I really like that a lot too because I do have some tender-headed clients. I mean, we all got those. The pins are Japanese steel, so you can sanitize these and they're not going to disintegrate in your barbicide. The pins are also this kind of unique wave, kind of like a bobby pin almost. And instead of having three rows, there's only two. So you don't have quite as much breakage that you would have with some of these combs that have the three that you, you tease with. Um, I don't have breakage with this. The, there's coating on these pins so that it feels actually pretty good on the scalp if you uh, detangle someone's hair with it. And I've found that um, using this as a detangler is just as effective as using some of my other tools to detangle. I actually think this is easier. So, great. And uh, everybody, Marcus, he asked about using it uh, to back home for balayage. We're gonna we're gonna get to that later, and we're also gonna be giving away one of these uh, Jatai combs for somebody who comments during the feed and is on at the end. So stay on. And Marie says, "Rat it high." <laughs> so oh, baby, let me tell you what. I I actually am gonna talk to you. I have done some balayage with this. I don't tend to do a lot of back combing in my balayage, but I started doing it with this because it's so much easier to comb out. Um, so I'll talk to you about that after we're done here with Miss Victoria. Great. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna take, as you can see, I just pre-curled her because nobody wants to sit around and watch me curl a head of hair, right? It's kind of boring. <laughs> but what I do is I, I roll these little curls up and I just clip them with your traditional, this is a duck bill. You get these wherever, I think all of us have some of these. Um, I let it cool. I spray it really, really good so that she's got some hold. And you just take these out. I'm so sorry. These are kind of snagging a little bit, but that's just the nature of the beast. <laughs> and we, Chrissy was asking about the cost of the combs. We're going to have Jatai uh, jumping in, Chrissy, and they're going to answer some of those questions for you while Jessica is pulling out the curls. And... Um, Teasing is something, you know, for, for volume that everybody has sort of their own teasing technique or their idea of how you should tease. What are your thoughts on teasing, Jessica? Um, I am definitely going to show you how I like to back comb and tease the hair. I tease my, ha my own hair a lot because uh, I have kind of a mohawk and it sticks straight. So I personally feel like if you're going to back comb the hair, you need to do it the proper way, which is in down out in down out don't just go like this because if you do this you're destroying that person's hair if you just do this it's so much easier to one comb it out two it's not going to trash their hair three um it's they're not going to have as much frizz okay and so coated tips too this has this comb has coated pins so they don't scratch the scalp doesn't break the hair so that's a real benefit right there yeah, I actually really like that because um, the ones that don't have that kind of hurt your scalp if you comb through with them. Um, Marcos, who asked our last good question, is asking another one about telling clients about once their hair has been teased um, and now they go home, how do you tell them to comb out the back combing? Very gently. Uh, I, you know, just like you would come out any tangle start from the bottom and work your way up okay if it's too much and they're having trouble uh, I will usually tell them to get into the shower wet their hair down and put some conditioner in it 
and it'll probably be a little bit easier to brush out that way too. They also need to make sure they're using the proper tool if they're combing through it or trying to brush it out while it's wet. Okay. You need a brush or a comb that has very flexible tips. Um, this, I have done this on wet hair and I felt like it was pretty good. Everything glided right out. The back combing with this was so much easier to brush out than a traditional comb or some of the, you know, the three, the, have you guys seen those combs? They're, they're real skinny and they have, you know, three sets of teeth in there. This only has two rows, but some of them are longer and shorter. Uh, I feel like this doesn't do the kind of damage that those other ones do. It's a lot easier to brush out. Great. So now we're getting into some hair. She has a lot of hair. She does. Van uh, Vanessa. <laughs> Vanessa's the Jatai rep that's here, and this is Victoria, so I'm probably going to make that mistake <laughs> a handful of times. I'm really sorry about that. Oh, that's true. We're also in my new space, guys. I just moved into my own little studio, so I'm kind of excited about that, too. Do you use any type of texture powder for back combing? Sometimes. It, it depends on the hair and the client and what they're looking for. Um, I do, I love, I'm a matrix artist, so of course I have some matrix height riser right here. This is one of my favorites. You can find this at Salon Centric. Cosmo Prof, I think, has it too. Um, I'm a salon centric junkie, so I'm there a lot. But it just depends. Some clients don't need it because they have a ton of really thick, full hair. Right. Or if you back comb well enough, you probably don't need it either. But it just depends on what you're doing. And this is a great time, too, to be doing a teasing updo demo. We've got prom, we've got weddings, uh, we've even got festival where people want some more texture, maybe want some volume, some height. So because I'm kind of going for a vintage feel, I'm actually gonna brush through these as I pull them out a little bit. And you can see, does anybody remember in beauty school when you did the old, the little old babies and they came in and they had their little sets and you had these little partings that you had to deal with? Back combing will get rid of those too. Because it sort of both covers it and incorporates all the hair in one? Yeah. Yeah, because you're going to basically mat the hair together, in a sense. I guess matting is not the best word, but you guys know what I mean. So you can see it's kind of already taking that kind of glam Hollywood wave feel back here. And I'm just brushing it and letting it mold around my hand. Yeah, she's got great hair. Um, to set her, I used some heat buffer from Matrix, which is a thermal setting spray. It's got a little bit of hold and a little bit of shine, and it protects the hair up to 450. I always recommend um, using some kind of heat protector. Great. Now the comb is uh, thermal resistant. Yes. And anti-static, meaning, which you mentioned earlier, that it's it's not going to create a bunch of uh, frizz and staticky flyaways. Um, what's the what's the common? You already kind of demonstrated your teasing. Um, what do you think? Do people use back combing as much as they used to, or is it all depending on, like you said, the client, the style? I think it really depends on the client and the style. You know, you find a lot of back combing in, you know, um, wedding hair, um, prom hair, studio work. Like if you're on a movie set doing stuff, you'll probably find some back combing. Um, I have older women who they come in and they're like, come on, Jess, you know, you got to tease that. I need some Jersey hair. I need some Texas hair. That's what they tell me. Um, and I lived in Texas for a while, so I can definitely tell you that hair is always bigger there. Um, Maricela is asking if you have a product you recommend for flyaway hair. Flyaways. Depends on the flyaway. Um, I do really like, one of my favorite tricks is to take the back of my comb, and because this is a nice resin, it's not gonna break, it's not gonna get damaged easily from product. I like to take the back of the comb, 
spray some hairspray on there mm. and smooth it like this. And you can see it just kind of paints those little hairs down. That's great. Um, and Heather, this is great Heather, she loves backcombing for her pageants. So Heather does pageant hair, which for sure you have to get this set in there that is going to last through a, a day of competition. So well, here we go, we're going to watch. See that? That was like nothing. It was like butter, you guys. Do that again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do another section right here. And I'm going to get a little Look at all that. Mm -hmm. And you can see it like it really bumped her hair up a lot. Just just that. Yeah, look at all that. And that's I didn't put any product on her her base at all. I didn't put hairspray in there or, any, or anything yet. And a lot of the times I will go in right here with some kind of product to lift the root a little bit. But look at that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I always joke, I'm like, if you want glam waves, sometimes you gotta have a rat's nest first. <laughs> and I think I've combed it down maybe three times. Like, I'm not really having to go bonkers to get um, anything going there. Here, like sometimes if you can, if the hair, you think the hair is getting torn, you can hear it. Hear it so quiet. Yeah, it's like nice and quiet. I like that because it doesn't freak my clients out either. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people panic when they hear funny. No, what was that? <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Just trust the process. <laughs> Don't worry about what that was. Um, I oftentimes will leave the front out just so that you have something to kind of keep it smooth looking and help hide your other, you know, little nests that you create there. Stephanie Hodges wants to say hi, Jess. Hi, Steph! <laughs> you gotta come see my new space! I'm gonna go to the front here because this is so much. <laughs> look at that. There's so much volume right now. Yeah, I need another one of these bread. Oh. <laughs> but look how much, like your hair, I mean, we haven't done much styling to it just yeah. yet, but look how full it already is. It's like, crazy. You got, you got like Jersey Shore? I'm from Texas. <laughs> there you go. It's Texas roots. <laughs> what part? El Paso. Okay. And remember, everybody, thank you, Andrea, for your comment. Uh, if you comment during the feed, uh, at the very end, after we've also done a quick little color demo um, where Jessica shows how to use the, the teasing comb with some color application, we're going to give away one of the combs, and we're just going to pick somebody who has commented during the feed, but you have to be on at the end so you hear your name called out. Oh, so we got a roll happening right now here, huh? Yeah, I'm gonna try to roll this up. <laughs> Courtney says, my mama told me she was jacking my hair to be Jesus every time she, she combed my hair up. That's great. That's, oh my God. I mean, I think my grandma would say like things like the higher the hair, the closer to God. <laughs> and these days I'm just kind of like, uh, okay. <laughs> Whatever, Graham. I'm not sure how well that's gonna stay up there. Cause your hair's kind of too clean. <laughs> your hair's too clean. <laughs> oh <Okay>. no. <laughs> and uh, so. everybody, if you have any questions for Jessica, she. Uh, what are you known for, Jessica? I think I'm mostly known for my color. Um, more than anything else, honestly. Uh, I do like to do like more funky updos. Um, I always joke when when someone hits me up and they're like, can you do my wedding? I'm like, is it uh, Beetlejuice themed? <laughs> no, then no, probably can't do your wedding. <laughs> um, I do really like to do a lot of vintage styling because I just find them very pretty. 
Although, Victoria's hair is really, really clean, so it's kind of not one of those people who washes my hair like every day. Stop that! <laughs> That's so bad for your hair. I know, but I can't like, ugh, I need it. I feel weird if I don't. <laughs> I feel you. I've got, I, I have those moments And my too. hair's like stayed pretty healthy, like. Yes, Andrea, her Instagram handle is at hair hunter. H-A-I-R-H-U-N-T-E-R. So what I'm doing is I'm just backcombing a little bit more because I felt like I kind of brushed, like I said, it, it's it's super easy to brush out. And I think I brushed a little too much of it out. So just kind of redoing it. And the idea with like a victory roll, ideally you don't want to see a little hole. Like, does that make sense? You don't want to see through the victory roll. There should be no... Um, mm. Yeah, so you want some density there. So that, yeah, you know. yeah, you don't want to be able to see, you know, the wall through it or whatever. Right. So I will usually just form it around my hands and then let it fall into place. And it's not wanting to cooperate today, <laughs> which is probably more my fault. <laughs> If we can't do it, we can just do some glam waves. I could do it. Thanks, Diane, for your comment. Stephanie, the comb is by Jatai, J-A-T-A-I. It is the Jatai Teasing Pin Comb. And it's great for teasing, back combing, detangling. You can use it for balayage, color melting. All right, we're gonna uh, go the other way with you it. You get a lot of volume and lift with it. And uh, we're gonna be giving one away at the end of the feed. There's also in the caption, if you see, there's a link that will take you to um, to where you can uh, win the comb even after the live feed. Beverly says, I find where people fail in backcombing is not enough tension with the hand that is holding the hair. I would agree with that. If you don't hold that hair firm, it will not backcomb well. I'm going to turn her just a little bit. You should not be able to okay. pull the tail of the backcombing comb through the cushion base you're trying to create. Oh, that was so detailed. Thank you for that comment. That was great. I would completely agree with that. I'm trying the other side because the other side just kept falling, so I have another different idea for that. Katie Lindgren says she's horrible at teasing. If you're just joining us, um, we did some of the demo of teasing earlier. Jessica, just vi uh, verbally, Tell us your combing, your your teasing technique. Um, I go in. I, I agree with what the other person said. I, I'm sorry, I can't remember what you said her name was, but you gotta have some tension on the hair. And I go. Let me just show you. I go in, right down, and out. I don't like to just go like this because that's when you make a nice ratted mess in the hair. And we're working on some victory rolls here with, with very clean, silky Yeah, hair. it's like super <laughs> silky. I'm struggling a little bit here, so we might have to do just some Hollywood waves or do a braid or something here. Which is great, because we, what we really wanted to see was some of your uh, backcombing technique, and that's what we've gotten to see. Did you apply any product before setting the curls? Yes. Um, I use a product called Heat Buffer from Matrix. So it's got a hold, it's got um, shine, and it has some uh, heat protectant up to 450 degrees. And Tyler says it kind of looks like the tap and tease from back in the day. Is that a term familiar to you? I tap and tease. don't know what a tap and tease is. Tyler is giving you a request. He'd love to see a deep part with huge waves. Uh, I think she's got a pretty deep part going. I'll show you in just go. a second. Okay. 
That's neat. You're getting, ooh, I didn't think to take requests. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. I just love glam waves so much. Like, if you guys know who Mustafa Avci is, I love his work. It just blows my mind. And um, someone I've been really stalking on Instagram, too, is uh, Miss Rockabilly Ruby. Like, I want to take a class from her so bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she does amazing pinup hair. She does. So let's see how deep of a part we have over here, actually. Yeah, we've got a pretty deep part mm. going. Look there. Yep. But look at that volume. It's amazing. Can we do drag queen hair on you, Victoria? Sure. <laughs> I love a great drag queen. And that you, you've been handling the hair a lot, too, and the volume is still, I mean, that you're still able to keep all that height. Look how high that is. Yeah. <laughs> This is perfect. You're gonna look like Delta Burke in a minute, right? and I'm never saying that again. Stop doing the math. <laughs> you could have just watched it on, you know, Nickelodeon or whatever. I watched Golden Girls religiously, so. <laughs> and I'm actually, I like to back comb from the underneath. I will see people do it on top. I just feel like sometimes that gets a little fuzzy. Sometimes I do it on top. Depends what I'm doing, I guess. That's my bad, Victoria. I should have been like, okay, we're going to put victory rolls, so don't clean your hair too much. <laughs> I've had them done before, and it's like, it just depends on the person, like, if I have to wash it or not. And Monica, thanks for asking, for jumping in. This is the Jatai Teasing Pin Comb, and uh, in our comments, we're going to have Jatai jump in and let you know where you can get it. It's a new comb, and Jessica's been working with it for um, some great volume here, and she's going to do a little demo <laughs> to look at all that hair <laughs> color and the comb. I'm like I've lost some of it too. Like, really? Because I still have to get like my hair thinned out, like in between haircuts, and um, with the loop on. You had to. In your hair mm -hmm. before I started the loop on. That's yeah. crazy to me that you no, ever thin your hair because <laughs> it would like get like a lion's mane, it would be out of control. <laughs> so I'm trying to just kind of sculpt some of this a little bit, smooth it out. to stay right about there but I don't want to leave an indentation this is perfect because Viva Las Vegas is coming up are you going no oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying for like girls who it's true. are going I want to go so bad but I always have something going on yeah and this year I have Judas Priest tickets so oh, yeah <laughs> sorry sorry Viva yeah. My, my Judas Priest love comes first. I used to go when I first started shooting. I would go, but I spend like half my time in the hotel room shooting. <laughs> Not shooting? Doing yeah. For Viva? Instead yeah. of doing any of the fun yeah. stuff that goes on there? Taking pictures of all the pinups. <laughs> so Jewel asked about your spray. I'm just going to show her. It's the Kevin Murphy Session Spray. I also really like the um, Matrix uh, Volume Fixer. I'm just out of it right now. Ooh, look at that. It looks so pretty. So I'm just pinning this down because it's going to kind of make mm -hmm. some waves. And Tyler appreciates that deep part and all that volume. <laughs> That's some crazy volume that is in her hair right now. It's insane. Just joining us, we're with Jessica Warburton at Hair Hunter on Instagram, and she's doing some glam waves, deep part. She got a lot of volume uh, at the with uh, teasing back combing using the Jatai teasing pin comb. It's a, a new comb that's really great for teasing, detangling, um, and we're going to also show how it could be used with. Uh, balayage and color melting and 
She's just now placed a few pins to hold in some of these deep waves. And if you'd like to win one of these great combs, it's 100% Japanese stainless steel. It's got a really unique pin structure and pattern, so you can do really high volume teasing. We're going to be giving away one at the end of the feed, but you just need to comment it so we see that you're there. And we'll call out your name at the end, and then you can just direct message to Ty with your address, and you'll get that comb. Emily wants to know why the blue clips are set on the back like that. Um, it's just going to kind of give me a little bit of definition in the waves, because once I take these out, they'll kind of just stay put. If that makes sense. And it'll give just a little bit more of a vintage feel because it'll round out this. See how it does that? Mm -hmm. it gives more of a little, little wave right mm -hmm. there. Pretty. Can you see that? Yeah. I'm not sure no, how really that can. looks in the screen. No, it looks very pretty. But it, it just kind of pinned that wave into place mm -hmm. and still left her with volume back there. Yeah. And so now I'm just going to work on this side, getting these little waves more tame. And I like to just use my hand. This is like a brush. It's got mixed boar bristle, uh, boar bristle, <laughs> bristle, <laughs> boar bristles, and some of the just the regular plastic ones. And I just kind of mold them around my hand. And uh, Maricela, her Instagram is at hair hunter. And sometimes the natural oils from your hand will give you just the best shine and I mean, it's like the best product sometimes. <laughs> and so this, I'm just gonna kind of blend back because it looks like there's a crease right there. So once again, you can see right there, it's taking shape. So I'm gonna spray that a little bit and just form it. And you could put a pin right there if you wanted to. I'm not going to because I'm still kind of working with this. And here's, um, I mean, keep talking about the styling when you need to, but Renee just had a kind of a general question. She's just getting back into doing hair. How can you build a clientele when you're just starting out? That's a big, big discussion, but um, I'm sure Jessica has a couple pointers. So first of all, find a good salon that's willing to work with you. I started out at the Butterfly Loft and I got really lucky because they were very willing to take me on. Um, I didn't have like the best experiences uh, assisting and you know, being an older stylist, this was a new career for me. I was in the military for eight years. And so, you know, coming in to something completely different, I think a big part of it is um, Long story short, find your lighthouses, right? Like lighthouses, what does that even mean? Well, lighthouses lead a ship to safe waters when there's a storm, right? So you need to find your lighthouses. Find someone who's gonna guide you to the safe place and set you up for success versus just throwing you behind the chair and being like, okay, do what you need to do to get your clients. Um, I really appreciated that about being at a place like the Butterfly Loft and there's a lot of salons out there that are have good people in them that are going to be willing to help you out. Um, I think another thing that helped me a lot was uh, building my Instagram game. Mm -hmm. I think I've gotten at this point probably a good half of my clientele has come from Instagram itself. And just being cognizant of your Instagram and what, it, what does that mean? Well. Don't just hashtag, you know, of course you want to hashtag Modern Salon and, you know, all these shout out, Allure Magazine, all these shout out type of things. You want to tag them, right? Because that's going to help you too. But don't forget to hashtag things like if, you know, like I'm in LA, so I will hashtag things like Los Angeles, Hollywood hairstylist, um, Hollywood hair. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you want people to know you're local. So, and also your bio is really complete. Sometimes on people's bios, they don't give away to get a hold of them that right there or don't give them enough information. I think that's really good about the way that you promote yourself. And Tyler, you've probably, he says you look very familiar, Jessica. Well, you've seen her um, on Modern Salon, in Modern there. Salon, and she also uh, has won some hairdressing challenges. 
Yeah, um, I have done, I was, I won the bioionic contest. Um, I'm a matrix artist, so you might see me running around with matrix a lot. I'm on their social squad. So that could be part of where you've seen me. Um, so pretty, we're gonna go in front here. Oh, how pretty. I just put a little, oh, I wanted, I really wish I had yeah. a little flower to tuck in here, because I think I that'd be so cute that. with a flower. But you can see the, oh, kind of that wave. so pretty. Kind of forming there. Yep. And the back has like those waves going. And you could probably even brush this out if you wanted to, but I kind of like how I love formed this. they I are. I love how, um, how you just move from one thing to the other. How you had sort of an idea in your head, but... It wasn't working now. It wasn't working, and that's <laughs> such a good lesson, you know, in the salon and in life. Um, it's beautiful. My little trick for my own. See, what is that doing? <laughs> I wish I just had like a little... I like putting a big, huge flower, yeah. like right here, because what that does is, and I, I wish I had thought to bring one of mine, because I have some at home, but what it does is it hides all these little like l weird spots in the hair. It's like right now you can see there's like a little lip type of thing right here going on. Um, so the flowers are really great for hiding that stuff. I always do it to like hide the bobby pin or like the rubber yeah, band. Yeah, or the bobby pin, the rubber band, whatever you have to do to hide and keep, but at the same time, keep that real pretty wave yeah. just right there. And sometimes you can even adjust it a little bit so that it doesn't have that weird bubble. And how, how long do you think this would um, last? Well, it depends on how she takes care of it and where she's at. I've seen them last all night, you know. Uh, I'm not gonna spray a ton of hairspray in her hair, but I've also seen them, you know, they leave and walk out and it's super windy and there wasn't enough product put in it. Um, these mm -hmm. types of looks kind of require a lot of product to stay put, I think. So pretty. All right. So there you go. We have our final look. We're going to move on to a little color, but first we're going to really appreciate these waves and that volume at the crown. And I just messed all the waves up by <laughs> pushing it to the front. Dang it. That's okay. Very, very pretty. You're gonna have a hard time walking away, aren't you? It would, yeah. I mean, here. So Anne brought me these pretty um, orchids, but you can see like if you popped a little flower right there, it really hides a lot of that stuff where you're like, okay, how am I gonna hide this? Oh, pretty. And that's something um, a lot of the more rockabilly type girls will do. They'll have like a big, big, big flower and just, psh, or you can put yeah. like something like this you could put up in a little like bandana and tie the bandana. You could, oh, that was actually kind of cute. You can probably tell it like this. Hi. <laughs> I'm just gonna brush through these and see if we can get even a more defined way of going. Right now I'm just using a vent brush. This is a regular wet brush, vent brush. But you can see it, those pretty waves and lots of volume. I'm really loving how much <laughs> volume we got in your hair. That's insanity to me. So if you're just joining us, we are working with um, Jessica Warburton. She is at Hair Hunter on Instagram, and she's been doing an updo, well, we started updo, we moved to Glam Waves using the Jatai Teasing Pin Comb, which is a new tool that's great for teasing and back combing and detangling, and it can also be used for balayage and color melting, and um, you did use it for balayage recently, right? Yeah, I did. There you go, you guys can check that out. There we go. A little more defined, Very a lot of volume back here. And she has, she has a lot of hair, but it is pretty fine and it's really long, so it's heavy. So it's, you know, I don't know if. And I well, love this S wave right there that you created with the pin. That's so pretty. Yeah, that's why I had those, for who was ever was asking, that's why those clips were right here. Cause it literally gives that little, mm -hmm. I feel like it feels very 60s. It gives that 60s kind of it's feel to pretty. it. It's kind of a, just a little pop out there. I'm like, I'm gonna spin you from a shape in there. Yeah, that's cool. All right. The little clip isn't holding up, so that's, that's my <laughs> bad. I should have like been prepared with some kind of cool little 
Well, you didn't know you were going to move into this, but you Yeah, can. that's true. Ooh, that's I had great. planned to do victory rolls, and it just wasn't working out for me today for whatever reason. So the balayage portion. So here's what I found worked really well with this. Um, as a colorist mostly, I often get, um, I think pretty much, I mean, I would say 70% of my business now is balayage of some sort, whether, whether we're doing balayage and then a vivid on top of it or um, just basic balayage. Um, and I don't generally do a lot of back combing in my balayage because it's always so hard for me to comb out. I don't work with an assistant. I don't really often enjoy working with an assistant, honestly. Uh, this has kind of changed that this week. I've been doing a lot more of the back combing balayage. Um, the back combing balayage I do fill out comes out a lot more blended than um, not back combing it. So what I like to do when I balayage is even if, regardless of what tools I'm using, I like to do zigzag parts. So I will zigzag the parting and there's extensions in this, so it's not gonna be perfect, perfect, but I will zigzag my parting. Okay. And it's a mannequin head, so it's kind of hard to tell sometimes. Or actually, I could probably brush out Victoria and do it on her if we wanted to. What do you prefer? Um, I think because, let's brush out Victoria and, and do it on her just because there is an extension in here so you can actually really see the kind of partings I like to take when I do my balayage. Um, and you'll also see how easy it is to brush out the back combing that this does. Okay, great. So. You're not tender headed, are you? Nope. Okay, good, because it's not gonna matter that much with this comb. So you can see that's done. She's brushed out on this side already, completely. <laughs> A little staticky. That's my fault. If I deal with static, sometimes I'll just spray my brush. And there you go, no more static. I did just brush all your ways out though, almost. <laughs> Do you want me to bring your tray back? Um, yeah, thanks. Ooh. And this little thing is uh, pink pewter, if you guys ever... Mm-hmm. They're such pretty accessories. They have really cool stuff. So now she's brushing out the back combing, and it's coming out so easily. Yeah, it's coming out really easily, which is pretty awesome, because usually it takes me a little while to <laughs> undo my back combing. And I'll show you one more little back combing I like to do when I'm doing more of like the Edward Scissorhands type of hair. And the static is from my brush, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that came out really nice and easily. When I balayage, what I like to do is. Let me get behind you. Again. Okay. You know what? Is it easier if I turn her this way? Yeah. Okay. Whatever's easiest. Perfect. I like to when I start. I always I start in the front because they all want to be brighter around the face. So I always start my balayage in the front. Um, right here. And most of the time, I'm doing four traditional quadrants because I like to keep it simple. Some, you'll see a lot of people do these crazy sectionings, and I just think that makes a lot more work, honestly. Oh, great. Okay, Super yeah. Super zigzag. It's we gonna really give you, it. yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll help prevent really harsh lines in your balayage. Oh, that's great. And you're right, we see it so much better on Victoria's head. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> the extensions, and just sometimes the mannequin heads are just, you know, everybody knows how awkward they can be sometimes. Well, and the contrast between scalp and hair, too, is really, makes it really visual. That's great. So I'm just going to sit this on this side. So, when I like to balayage, I also take the front sections. My subsections are always... I do pretty thin pieces because I like a really nice blend. Um, but for purposes of, of showing the comb, I'm gonna take a thicker section. I like to take diagonal pieces. 
So I feel like it, and sometimes depending on what they're looking for, sometimes I'll even take really like diagonal, like, but not vertical, almost vertical sometimes though. So, depending on what they want, I'll go twice up top. Usually, well, that was a little more than twice. Twice on the bottom. And there you go. With this comb, I've been finding I don't have to do quite as much teasing because I used to have to do that a lot to get like a nice little cushion mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. But this creates a really good cushion. And then we have a little bit of... Um, have some lightener over here in my little paddle. Well, it's not lightener. I'm a liar. <laughs> it's conditioner. <laughs> Do you want me to hold it? Oh, uh, yeah, if you don't mind. Perfect. So, I use a paddle a lot. And a little trick, you guys. If you guys ever, you see these little flyaways that are coming up right here? I will take hairspray wherever my, oh. I said over here. <laughs> need more hands. I do. I take hairspray, and I'll dust some hairspray on it. And then I'll just pull it down and it helps those little flyaways because those flyaways will sometimes create spots. So because this is conditioner, it's going to be kind of different to work with. But I kind of bead the product onto the end. And I just start. And I go down. Sometimes I go up, sometimes I don't. It depends on what I'm doing. But you just beat it. And because I like to paint a V shape, like a lot of people, that's also, this little zigzag is gonna help prevent one big solid line right mm -hmm. through her head when mm -hmm. you're doing your V shapes. And then I'll get it on the paddle I'll get more product and I will saturate it on the ends. Um, I also like to put, usually I'll put some product on the paddle because it just, I feel like it helps me saturate that. Awesome. And saturation is really key with balayage, you guys, because a lot of, oh, you get spots. Well, if you're getting spots, it's because you're not saturating it enough. But the vat combing right there is going to help a lot with preventing those spots too because this will give you some blend okay and then normally I would just pop like a foil or a mesh or something under there but that's great wow then when you go to brush that out in the sink just use this because it's not gonna hurt it and it's gonna come right out see that it's already out it's the right right in here in the product but and there you go your back combing is out <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I was like, wow. The first time I did it, I was like, dude, that's awesome. <laughs> it's done. Yeah. Right. So instead of spending, normally it would spend me about, I would spend maybe 30 minutes at the sink trying to uh, brush those out. And now it's just that's no great. time at all. All right. So everybody, we packed a lot into this. Um, we got... Uh, we got to see some back combing. We got to be see some glam ways. We got to see uh, using that teasing back combing for color application balayage. And now is the time. Sorry, <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're, sure <you're> here. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and um, and have Vanessa pick our winner. Someone is gonna win this uh, Jatai comb. And when we call out your name, we're gonna have you um, direct message Jatai on Instagram and you can give out your um, your address to Jatai. Um, thank you for your comments. Thank you for <laughs> your, uh, you know, as Chrissy says, your positive vibes because it really is wonderful to That's support like each other. Right and and uh, there were so many um, great questions, so many great comments. Um, <laughs> she's not, I'm still playing. She's still play with this hair. Um, Does anybody else have any more questions? Anybody else have any other questions? Uh, we have some. We have some thanks. Thanks from Chrissy Kennedy. Thanks from Renee Hansen Moradi. 
Thanks from Beverly McLeod. Thanks, guys. Thank you all. Thank you for watching. And, and I, can't, I can't see all the comments. I don't know how to do that. You can do it. You can pick. You can pick. Uh, I can't visually see all. Of them. Oh, well, you know what? Like five we could post uh, <laughs> a winner on the feed. Do you want to look at it? Uh, and then we're gonna. Okay, so give us just a few minutes. This is going to get posted onto Facebook, and you're going to see the winner is going to see their name. Thank you, everybody. It was a pleasure, but most of all, thank you, Jessica Warburton. Thanks. Take care, Hunter. Take care. Bye, guys. Bye.